In this video, I am breaking down the intro shot from my NFL animation, showing how I built everything inside of Cinema 4D, Redshift, After Effects, and Photoshop. This shot sets up the pitched matchup between these Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Miami Dolphins, built around a clean, symmetrical structure that is designed around color separation and contrast. Let's get into it. Okay, so if you saw part one, I broke down how the football transition worked. That was like midway through the video. So in this part, I'm focusing on the first shot, the opening setup that introduces both teams and establishes red versus blue identity that runs through the entire piece. Obviously red being the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and blue being the Miami Dolphins. The idea was coastal clash. So we need to establish that color separation right away. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hop into Cinema 4D and I'm gonna show you how I set up the pillar animations at the start of this promo piece. Alrighty, so it might look scary when it first comes up, but this is our first intro shot. When it pulls down, it starts the this Sunday. If you've seen the full animation, you know that this Sunday starts my voiceover and I start, you know, explaining what we're promoting here. But essentially, we needed to pull down into that. So you can see at the end of this animation, it's pulling down. If you go to the middle here and you basically see the garage hitting in lines with the textures, what we're seeing here is the Tampa Bay Buccaneers on the left and the Miami Dolphins on the right. This camera view is very protected. Everything else in the scene, when I pull out of this camera, you're gonna be like, there's really nothing there because there is nothing there. It's a dark scene where the emphasis is on red and blue black and white. When you create rules like this, you just follow the rules and sometimes it creates less work for you. So you're about to see when I pull out this camera that there's nothing here except for this intro pillar scene. Now this, this viewport probably looks crazy to you right now, but there's like a billion cameras. All this is just like a billion cameras. These things are just lights. And essentially what's happening here is this was done on a super rushed timeline and everything was so fast. It did everything in two and a half weeks that nothing's really organized in these files, right? And I wasn't going to go ahead and alter the magic of these original files. I'm not touching it. I'm not touching it. It's exactly what it is. Okay. This was a pitch project and literally it was so fast that I had to put these things together. And realistically, everything was like subject to change. So I wasn't like saving anything. And when it worked, it worked. And we sort of just ran with it, right? So this is essentially set up with just cubes. If you open up the very bottom one, we can see right here that it's just one cube on the bottom for the player and then one cube on top for the little holographic material that's on the top, this incandescent material. Now, obviously I'm using Redshift, so I will go ahead and show you what that material node looks like. It's basically using this Fresnel to give that outer little holographic look. That's basically the key if you want a quick summary, but you can look up more tutorials on these incandescent materials. Uh, they're very hard to understand unless you've done them a bunch of times. Uh, so basically this is the node tree here. Uh, but definitely go look up a tutorial to learn more about these. Uh, this is what's above each of those columns, and that's what's going to give us that holographic material that looks see-through. Uh, we have a blue one, and then we have a red one. And obviously, this is going to give us a good contrast from the left to right side to show that they are different columns. And I wanted to make that very clear by emphasizing it on the top. Now, the actual shading of the layers on the cubes is essentially very easy. It's just getting plugged in through the diffuse channel. So essentially, this is what the node structure looks like. It's just this image here getting shoved through the diffuse channel and the reflections and the transmissions and the coat and the emission are basically all emanating that blue Miami Dolphins color. So it's gonna give us this sort of coating. But that's essentially what's on the columns here. And all we're really gonna see is the face of the column and the end of the column as they pop up into frame. So all of this other stuff is like stretched and it doesn't even matter. I didn't UV map nothing. Like it's just all put on there 
exactly what the camera is going to see. It's very important that all of this is going to be out of focus too. Where's our focus plane? Okay, it only really matters here. Okay, cool, cool beans. As for the animation of the columns themselves, it's it's super simple. They're just sliding in on the X or the Z plane. They're just sliding in. And then when it the camera pulls down, when the camera pulls down, all that's happening is they're just like expanding back out and there's this more grid happening basically only for when the camera goes down so it doesn't look like it's just one row. It's basically flipping out like that so that when this flies down it looks like there's like a whole batch of them but we don't have time to render that we ain't rendering more than the camera needs to see and that is a trope here that we will continue to use throughout this entire project now these little cubes on top these little tabs are going to represent a tie back in later in the animation when we do a field animation these are going to show up on a cloner field basically the exact same tile and we're only going to see the top of the tile we won't see the players so each of these tiles will represent you know like a player's column and later all we have to do is just show the top of it so we can do cool things where we show the blue and the red tiles and we can represent the players but we could just represent them with a color of red or blue the lighting is pretty simple we just have this backlighting basically happening here to give a little bit more of that dimension and that flare and here i'll crop it off a little bit but essentially we have the main shot here and then we have the side shots of each of the players and that's going to give us that's going to give us uh basically shots to cut from of just having the tampa bay buccaneers on one side and then just having the miami dolphins shown on another and then the combination of both sides in opposition to each other. That's going to basically establish that this is a matchup where they are equal right now, but it is decided for one of them to be the victor. Giving them both their hero shot establishes them as equal here. So each of these hero shots here is basically going to establish them as equal. And then when we see it in the main, this is essentially going to be, oh, they're matching up because even this animation inward is going to give that effect. You'll see something very common with how I animate things. I animate things all together. So the lighting is just as important to the concept as the animation is and the compositing to the editing, to the cell, to everything. Everything is contributing to the concept, whether it's the design, the lighting, or the compositing. Here I pulled up the live preview just a little bit so you can see how we're controlling the matchup from the red to blue. You really just don't see anything that I don't want you to see. And you'll notice this, actually, this is how your eyes work. You really only see this amount in focus sometimes. When you're looking at things, you can see everything in your peripheral, you see it, it's blurry, but it's not in focus at all. You really have a thin line of focus. And I think this was the project where I really decided to capitalize on that is you really only see what I want you to see. And we will change the shot to show you more is essentially the concept here. So if you go in and you look at the camera, we have this aperture set pretty low for such a high focal length. And that's gonna give us our uh, blurs on anything that's not in the focal plane. And obviously I'm animating that focal length. So it's basically like someone having a perfect focal pull on set every single time. That's essentially what 3D is with this sort of focal distance tool. Another reason why I love Redshift. Now my program actually shut down when I tried to preview this. So all I'm going to do is just show you that these side things obviously will look the same and they will be focused and controlled and you've seen the full parts of them because we are controlling where the eye is going. We're only gonna be looking at one of these people at a time, not all of them, but we're gonna roll our focus like an eye would roll its focus. And since I'm mentioning the side profile shots, I, I might as well as mention this pop-up animation is basically just Y values popping up and that little bit of uh, jitter here that we have when it impacts is basically that Y animation 
being animated back and forth just for a couple frames just to get a little bit more of an impact. That's going to increase realism. Essentially, all that's happening is some wonky little vibration thing at the end here. Like this is the main animation here, and then it's just some wonky little vibrating thing. That's going to give us our little bounce back. Each frame after it lands, it's going back and forth, and that's going to give us a little bit cleaner of an impact. So outside of the cameras and the intensity of where they're placed, the actual animation is very simple. It's just bouncing up on Y plane and then literally coming in on X plane. These shots obviously are the intro shots showing them spawning up as equals, as, as adversaries. And then the third shot basically shows them matching up together, showing that they are going against each other as equal counterparts opponents. Once rendering out these shots, I took it into After Effects to compose the actual pacing. I know I'm explaining everything all sort of at the same time, but I'd like to emphasize once again, like I did before, that this is actually my style. I do it all at once. I don't, I don't discriminate which side of the process is coming first. If it looks good when I'm doing a certain thing, then I lean into that. So I just want to emphasize that you know, when I'm explaining or when I'm going into something, it's just sort of like the mental trail of what was going on. It was sporadic. It was crazy. And I'm not going to lie about that. It was definitely sporadic and it was crazy. And it was like, whatever's working, we're going to go with it. So sometimes I'm doing other parts of the process that are boring and then something spawns out of it and then I take it somewhere. So hopefully I gave you a little bit of insight, but I would say the main takeaway here is Pay attention to what's in front of your camera and don't build stuff outside of your camera that isn't going to be on camera. You would be wasting your time. So let's go ahead and jump into After Effects and see what we caught on camera. Alrighty, so for the first shot, we have the dolphins and they are spawning up with that Y animation. We see that little bit of vibration and the holographic material, that incandescent material is looking great and see-through. We can see the other sides of it through the polygons let's go ahead and check out our tampa bay buccaneers render now this is pretty good as well we obviously see the exact same thing happening as the other shot it's very equal and it looks very similar and put together it looks connected now for the shot where they're coming together we see basically nothing in the program you probably remember seeing more than you see here but that was very purposeful with the actual speed and the intensity of this animation it's basically hiding all the extra work of building out a set thankfully from these setup shots we understand that it's two football teams going at each other and these pillars are representing their teams now we just have to edit these together to match and feel equal so we have the tampa bay intro right here and then we have the miami intro right here the inner cutting's not completely equal, but it's pretty much equal. You can see it right here. The most important thing probably to break down in this intro specific section is this sky particle stuff that I have going on here. If you didn't know what this is, it's an effect called CC Snowfall. You can see my presets here. You can use them if you want. You basically play around with the wind and the variation and the spread. And this stuff essentially just falls like snow in a depth intensive way it responds to actual depth and it basically goes into 3d scenes really well it looks like it's really there because you can tell that some sort of depth parallax is happening in how the effect is applied now you can go and put colors on it as well so you'll see i have blue there and then i have red on the tampa bay buccaneers this is also giving us a lot more atmosphere so you can see here it has the red color for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I'm playing around with variation, speed, all that sorts of stuff. You would need to do this to your liking, to the scene, to the shot. It's not really like a drag and drop effect. It's more of a feel type of thing. But you can go ahead and use these settings if you want. Now, when it gets to the matchup of both of them, I went ahead and made a little bit of a masking setup so that we can have the red snow on the left side and blue on the right side. I say snow, but that's only because that's what the effect's called. It's not really snow, but when you take it apart, you can kind of see that, you know, um, the, the sides are separated. So we basically have mats set up for each of these. Obviously, this one is for the left side. 
and this one here is for the right side. It's basically just a split down the middle. I believe we have a little bit of a feather, 38% feather on each of them. And that's just splitting that down the middle so we can apply the effects on both sides, right? So we can have the blue on the blue side and we can have the red on the red side. I'm gonna go ahead and turn off the accent cell so we can kind of focus on one thing at a time. We'll get to that next. But at this point right here, what's happening is we are adding on a radio blur and that is the last effect that we will talk about in this intro stack. This radio blur is a CC uh, radio fast blur. It's essentially allowing us to stretch these pixels um, in a way that's different from a normal blur. You can see it kind of shoots them out and we're applying that from both sides. Uh, you can play that to your liking but this is a very powerful effect that basically shoots the blur out from wherever the center is. So yeah, very powerful effect. And that's what I'm using to get a little bit more of a pop out when we shoot down. That is going to accent with the cell that we added in from Photoshop. So we're gonna put that on here. You see how that's affecting it, right? And we're basically gonna go into Photoshop to see how we did that. Okay, so when dealing with the cell, it's important to know what your goal is. And my goal here with this cell on top of this footage was to just add accents. It wasn't to create anything new, it was to add accents. The same way that I added in this snow effect to add in a bit more particles and depth, I'm going to be adding these little brush strokes on like the edges of the columns. So you see here that these actual layers, these brush stroke layers are just simple, are just simple classic cartoonist strokes. They are just simple classic cartoonist strokes with a Wacom stylus. This is the stylus that I used. It's a Wacom or a Wacom stylus, whatever you like to call it. But essentially all that it is, is the classic cartoonist with my Wacom brush stylus and we go in frame by frame and essentially draw over certain things that i want to add in more pop to so right here i'm just drawing down the side of the actual column and i'm just illustrating sort of a kaboom basically so kaboom it's going down 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 and then what's happening here is this is aligning with what it's going to connect with on the next scene. So all these would be aligning. So we have an eye trace going on and then boom, there you see it. That's the connection right into this Sunday, the eye on this, then it drops into this Sunday, fills out the layers. Then we get the full white. It does a little bit of a completion with the color, emphasizing that it is blue versus red. Then we go back to the white. This is basically just eye trace being applied in a creative way. So if we look back, we can see it without cell and we can see it with cell. I'll play it without cell first. And then I will play it with cell. I don't know uh, what you think, which one is better, but this is my personal style. I love doing this effect. It gives it a little bit more pop and flair and I've sort of coined it in a lot of different pieces now. But essentially that's the intro shot and that is part two of this NFL animation breakdown series. The biggest takeaway here is how much visual structure you can build just through color separation and contrast. You don't need heavy lighting or complex scenes or geometry. If your color story is solid, the scene just feels designed. Stay tuned for part three of the NFL animation breakdown series. Turn on those post notifications so you never miss when I drop a new video. And once again, if you made it this far in the video, you are a goat. You clearly want to get better. So good luck to you, my friend, and I will see you in the next one.